Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle, and a brief tutorial on how to use the dollar value of a zero to hedge. So this is a simple application of the duration metric called dollar value of a zero. It's also called the price value of the basis point. I've covered the calculation of that in an earlier tutorial. Now let's apply it by imagining that we're the investor and that we have written some amount of call options. So in other words, we sold call options or we took a short position in call options. If we take a short position in call options, if we write the call options, we may be concerned about our interest rate decline. Because if interest rates go down, the owner of call options gains and the seller of call options loses. One thing we could do to offset that is to hedge with bond instruments because the bond will increase in price if interest rates decline. So let's look at that applied. So in the spreadsheet here, I've got the only two instruments we are talking about. In light blue, a zero coupon bond, and in orange, light orange, the call option instrument. So first the bond, which I've illustrated here on the chart. The blue is the nonlinear price yield curve. The, the green line is the tangent line. It's a straight line. It's the linear approximation. It is the duration line, or what I'm calling the duration line. So here's some assumptions. The face value of the bond is 100. It's a 30-year maturity. It's a zero coupon bond, just so I can keep it simple. At a 4% yield, so that's right here on the x-axis, and it intersects the blue and the green line right here at 4%. That's that tangent line, the green line. The duration of this bond happens to be about negative 28. Remember the interpretation of that. That means if the yield changes by 1%, then the price of the bond changes by approximately 28%. Emphasis on approximately because this is a linear approximation that's flawed. The slope of this line is not really the duration, it's really the dollar duration. In this case, it's fully negative 868. And in fact, the dollar duration here, the slope of this line, is 10,000 times the dollar value of the zero. If we divide this by 10,000, we're going to get approximately the dollar value of the zero. That's the one we're concerned about here. We're going to use that. You want to use it to hedge. So just to illustrate, at the yield of 4%, this bond is priced at $30.12. Again, 4% yield intersects that blue line, which is the price at right about here, $30.12. Now, if we shock the yield down by one basis point, we only go from 4% to 3.99%. The price of the bond, as you expect, goes up, right? That's the classic idea of yield goes down, price goes up. In this case, the price goes up by nine cents. That is the dollar value of the zero. We shock the yield by one per one basis point. I'm sorry, and the price goes up by nine pennies. That's the dollar value of the zero. Now, if I go down just a little bit for the other instrument, these are the call options that we are going to hedge. I can actually compute a dollar value of zero for those as well, and then I can use the do both dollar value of the zeros to construct the hedge. And so I'm going to use the black shoals. I'm not going to explain those calculations here, but if I take the call option, and again, these are just my assumptions, stock at 100, strike at 100, volatility of 40%, five-year term on these options. So these are non options on a non-dividend paying stock where the price is 100 because I just picked that out of the air. Now, if the interest rate is 4% again, then Black-Scholes, the option pricing model, tells me that the price of this option is $41.19. Now, again, I'm going to do the same thing and shock that yield down by one basis point. And in this case, the price goes up to $41.20. Such that the dollar value of zero for my call options is almost two pennies. It's 0 0.017, so it's one cent and seven tenths. It is 
uh, much less than the dollar value of the zero for the bond and I'm not surprised generally speaking the bond is more sensitive to interest rate changes than an option but an option does have a little bit of sensitivity to interest rate changes so now just keep in mind what we've done for both instruments I've computed for a single instrument I've computed the change in price well I can use that fact to set up the hedge so in this case here's the equality that matters what I really just need to be sure of is that on the one hand for the options these are the options that I'm writing the face value multiplied by the dollar value of the zero is equal to on the right hand side the face value of the bonds multiplied by the dollar value of the zero that's going to ensure my hedge based on the dollar value of the zero and so since I let's assume I wrote I took a short position a million dollars worth of the options here I know the dollar value of the zero is just less than two cents I know the dollar value of the zero for the bond is nine cents I can solve for this cell right here I'll bold it the face value of the bond that I need to take a long position in that will constitute my hedge so really I'm just solving for this proportion here I'm taking face value and option multiplied by dollar value of zero of the option and then dividing by dollar value of zero of the bonds in this case I get le little, a little bit less than two hundred thousand dollars in face value of the bond given these dollar value of zeros that's the long position I need to take that will hedge or offset any loss that I'll experience on the options if rates decline now I could test this let's just assume here here's my hedge on the left I write a million dollars in options on the right right here I take a long position in $186,000 of face value in the bonds now let's assume that the interest rates decline by one basis point my loss is given right here on the on that million dollars in options is negative I'm gonna lose about hundred and sixty eight dollars on the right I'm gonna gain on my long position of the bonds also hundred and sixty eight dollars and you can see that formula is pretty straightforward it's just the face value in the bonds multiplied by the dollar value of the zero divided by a hundred because that dollar value of zero is expressed in terms of the hundred dollar face value but the whoops let me just put that back but we can see that because I went long this amount my loss on the options has been offset by my gain on the bonds and we did that because we computed the dollar value of the zero for both instruments and the last thing I should note about this is that it's a very imperfect hedge uh, both are based this dollar value of zero is a first order approximation so it may or may not hold up for us and it especially won't hold up for larger changes in the yield and we also have uh, a basis risk because our hedge instrument in this case the bond is really not the same as the options so while we've just been talking about a very simple kind of interest rate change each of these interest instruments is susceptible to other factors and so there's basis risks between them so in a nutshell this is uh, this hedge is not going to be very perfect for us but it does illustrate the example so this is David Harper the Bionic Turtle thanks for your time